This video is an evaluation of the current version of Tesla's full self-driving, both the good and the bad, as a baseline to set our expectations for when I can get my hands on full self-driving beta. <laughs> I'm also going to do a real quick, real-world size comparison between our new Tesla Model Y and our Mazda CX-5. But let me cut to the chase here at the start. After a whopping one day of driving an electric car, I will never purchase a gas-powered car again. Legacy automakers be warned, ICE cars are going to be worth nothing faster than you can imagine. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I will leave my intro to speak for itself. Price is the only real reason not to buy an electric car, and especially a Tesla right now. They're that good and that fun. Okay, first let's do a quick real-world size comparison between our new Model Y and our two-year-old Mazda CX-5. Then we'll look at a number of places where a full self-driving 48.10 fails pretty badly. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick size comparison, just a kind of visual thing between the Model Y and the Mazda CX-5, which is our other car. So what I did was I tried to park them as close as I could to getting their rear tires pretty close to even. So let's see. The first thing is, as you can see from here, the Model Y sticks out a little bit further. It's pretty close on the back end though. So it's a little bit less, like the Mazda is a little bit stubby on the back end. And the Model Y has a little bit more. <laughs> but some of that is just like the spoiler and things like that. Um, so yeah, in terms of like Side to side size, again, you know, we can look at actual measurements if we want, but I'm kind of eyeballing it. So the Y has got some like hips on it, <laughs> like over where the wheels are. So the actual cabin's a little bit smaller and you can see there's a little bit more efficiency in terms of the Mazda because the cabin is a little bit wider than the Y from looking at it. So yeah, I think so. Because of this guy right here, some, some sort of hips there. So. so let's look at the front now. So the back tires are even, and you can definitely tell, maybe not so much from the video. So anyway, you can see that the two tires are not exactly lined up, it's, but it's like maybe like, you know, a few centimeters between the two of them. So not that much difference between them in that end. And then, yeah, I don't think the front, wow, they're remarkably similar in size. I think, Again, the Mazda is more square off on the front, so you can see it's sticking up, but the Model Y is just a hair longer. I mean, geez. So it's just a hair longer in the, both the front and back directions. Um, looking at it from the front in terms of width, again, it's a little more hippie looking. <laughs> the Mazda is a little more flat looking, but I feel like they're, I think the Y looks a little bit wider from this angle. But really, physically, the Y is generally, it just is more aerodynamically shaped. You can kind of look at it, right? The Mazda is a much more, you can see the front is more square, the top is more square, and the Model Y is very, sorry about the palm trees, <laughs> but the Model Y is much more aerodynamic. It goes up, and then it has a much more kind of refined back end which of course removes a little bit of cabin space because you can see the Mazda right back there, right? If you put them over the top of each other, you can see the Mazda over the top of the Y. Um, but the Y is slightly longer, so I'm sure it makes up for that cabin space by having a little bit more front to back size. But interesting, I mean, they're really, 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 the Y is just a teensy bit bigger. That's about it. But generally speaking, they're very, very close to the same size. So as you can see from that comparison, the two cars are pretty similar in size. The big difference is that the Model Y is more of a streamlined shape, so it's slightly stretched and a little bit hippier looking. <laughs> and the CX-5 is a little more blunt looking in comparison. But they really do look like they're pretty well matched in terms of size. So what about full self-driving 2020.48.10, which is the current standard release? Well, first of all, full self-driving 48.10 will not work on all unmarked residential streets as demonstrated. Okay, so we're driving 48.10 and it will not drive in the back streets here. So this is a good baseline. <clears throat> I think it's a good thing to find out, like watch. No, it absolutely will not steer back here. So it's completely unwilling to, uh, 
drive on these back roads that are not marked. So that'll be really interesting when we get to the beta to see how that does as opposed to what this version's doing. Also, 48.10 thinks that green lights are red even when it displays them as green on the display. All right, so as soon as we get on this marked road, hopefully the autopilot, navigate on autopilot will work. My gosh, I like the lumbar support. All right, let's see. All right. So you can see it's restricted the autopilot. Now it's phantom braking because it sees this light, but it's uh, silly that it's seeing this light because I uh, don't know why it thinks that light is red. So very, very poor, very poor. <laughs> it should definitely know better than that. That is, that is just terrible. 48.10 also will not turn on city streets at all, which is expected as that's not yet included. We'll see how it handles this. All right, yeah, it's doing that by itself. Okay, that's a good sign. Obviously knows there's a car up in front of us. Again, hate this UI. There should be, I think it's because I use Apple. Okay, you gonna turn? All right. still blinking yellow so we're good. okay um i i think it's because i'm used to apple um os where this that blue color means you're supposed to do an action which means you should press that so i feel like the ui should be fixed and this should have a more like an indication that it's indented so that when it's gray and you press it there's like an indication that it looks like it's indented all right it's handling the on-ramp okay uh let's see what the situation is uh oh Okay, there's a car come up. All right, hopefully, hopefully I will have room to merge. Yeah, I should have room to merge. Let's see what it decides to do. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> come on, dude, pick a lane. Try again. What, what I'm surprised at is that it's not doing anything in terms of turns and stuff. And again, that might just be because this is the version of the software. I lose track of where all of these different features come in. So it's keeping the lane, right? So I'm just having to like, you know, basically have my hand next to the steering wheel. So it's definitely, it's controlling the car and it's driving as long as it's a marked lane. But I can only make it 50. So according to this, I can only go five over on city streets and I guess probably 10 over on highways. Before we continue, if you enjoy this video, definitely make sure you like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube's algorithm works. And definitely make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of these. Also a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You guys have been wonderful and it's been it's been fantastic. I know I've been super busy the last couple of days, but I'm going to get back to it real soon. And of course I wanted to make a really big new Patreon patron shout out to two new patrons. Got to look down here. First of them is Ryan and the second one is Dan Cobb. Thank you both so much for your patronage, and I look forward to working with you more in the near future. Also, a big thank you to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. He's a wonderful artist, so you should definitely check him out. Search for Zenly Music on YouTube or Instagram. And finally, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely make sure you click our link in the description. If you click it and you purchase a new Tesla, you get a thousand free supercharger miles, and so do we, which is cool. All right, back to it. The 48.10 version is also prone to phantom braking, which is super annoying and could actually be dangerous if somebody is close behind you. So there is somebody behind me, but I gotta, I gotta make a left-hand turn up here anyway, so I'm gonna let it ride. And let's see how it does. This is a very poorly, very poorly marked turn, but it made it, so that's good. That's a positive sign. And let's see how it handles this light. It does not seem to like these lights at all. Take over, yep. <laughs> it just keeps, it keeps stopping. It keeps thinking that that's a red light when it's clearly not. And of course, this version of the software also ends when you get off the off-ramp of a highway. And hopefully it will go ahead and navigate itself over to the exit. Gotta learn to trust this thing. Yeah, you're gonna get off? You're gonna get off? You're gonna get off? All right, oh, it did it. Okay, yeah, it handled it by itself. All right, and now it's telling me it's ending, so all right. <laughs> I will take over. But still, that was pretty good. Another thing I find somewhat uncomfortable, 48.10 breaks a little bit later than I would as a human when coming up on slower stopped traffic. This isn't dangerous per se, but it feels a little more aggressive than I would be. All right, you gonna slow down for me? You gonna slow down for me? Ooh, that's a little scary. 
Wow, it braked, it braked pretty late in my mind. Definitely not what I would have picked. I would have gone a little earlier. And finally, 48.10 will sometimes do lane changes, but sometimes not, and it's unclear why it will sometimes and why not in other circumstances. On the good end, it does really, really well on the highway. It's kind of a weird thing, even though I've checked off that it doesn't need to confirm for lane changes, it still seems to require that. But when it does work and it makes the lane change, it's really, really good and it's very confidence inspiring and it shows you exactly where it's going to do the lane change. And so you can actually see in the blue that it's doing it correctly, that there's no car in the way. So that's really cool, very confidence inspiring. Sure, not ready for prime time. It's kind of okay. Uh, yep. Okay. All right, that was aggressive, but it did it. All right, All right. I gotta respect that. It also handles sharp turns really, really well. All right, let's see how it handles a reasonably sharp curve. It's very nice that it's got a good nose about the other car up there. And Navigate on Autopilot 48.10 also feels really, really safe when it's working right. And it's also really, really clear when it's failing because it beeps and it lights at you and everything. Although I was only driving a short distance today, I could tell that on a long road trip, full self driving as it is currently would be a wonderful aid. It would take a lot of the stress of driving off of your shoulders. And of course, you know, I've got to admit, it wasn't exactly terrible to take over driving either. This car is a ton of fun to drive. It hugs the road really, really well for a big car. It accelerates like crazy, and it's super quiet. So now we have our baseline experience with 2020.48.10. Now I'm ready for Navigate on Autopilot Beta to get here so I can see how much better it works in the fail scenarios than the current version does. I certainly would never trust my life to full self-driving 48.10. I can't wait to see how I feel about the new beta version when I get it. In the meantime, as I said in the introduction, I absolutely love driving the car, and I love that it will cost basically nothing to fuel up, and I love that it's quiet and non-polluting, and I love that I won't have to buy another internal combustion engine car ever again. Thank you, Elon, and thank you everybody who works at Tesla. Amazing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative and fun. If you did, definitely make sure you like and subscribe. And also, please be sure to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.